Okay, uh, hello to everyone. It's very nice to see you all. Today, we are very happy to have uh, Javier Magan all the way from La Patagonia, who's going to be telling us about the microscopic origin of the entropy of black holes in general relativity. So Javier, take it away. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, let me start to um, thank you all uh, for the invitation to speak at your seminar series. Um, it is always a pleasure to share one's work uh, with so many friends. So today I want to uh, describe some work I did in collaboration uh, with B.J. Balasurramanian, uh, Albion Lawrence, and Martin Sacieta. It contains uh, a strong claim, uh, and we believe it, it clarifies and to some extent uh, also demystifies uh, several famous results, uh, both old and new. So let me let me start by. Uh, wait. Let me start by uh, describing um, uh, some of uh, these old and recent results. So basically, it all started with the laws of uh, black hole thermodynamics. Uh, these laws suggested a thermodynamic interpretation of black holes, uh, which was then supported uh, first by the discovery that black holes uh, have a temperature, and second by the development of uh, Euclidean quantum gravity uh, methods. So now, if the statistical interpretation of the laws of thermodynamics uh, holds also for, uh, for black holes, uh, we should be able to find a, a space of black hole microstates uh, for a given set of uh, macroscopic parameters. So the question, of course, is uh, uh, which are these microstates? Um, of course, there have been a great deal of work in, in this question. Uh, let me review uh, maybe some of the most relevant. Uh, two related uh, proposals came, bar came parallelly uh, by Toft, uh, who analyzed the entropy, basically who proposed that this entropy came uh, from the entropy of uh, thermally excited modes in the vicinity of the black hole horizon. And also uh, by Bombelli, uh, Kuhl, and uh, Sorkin, and uh, uh, also by, uh, independently by Srednicki, uh, who proposed to understand uh, this entropy as entanglement entropy. Uh, the advantage of uh, uh, these proposals is that uh, after regularization, uh, we universally get, uh, basically directly on our nose, an entropy proportional to the area uh, as the entropy of black holes. But uh, the disadvantage uh, is that uh, this entropy is infinite without regularization. Uh, and it is um, at present, at least to my knowledge, um, it is um, at present unknown how quantum gravity uh, provides uh, such a regularization. We expect it does, but uh, we don't know how. Um, this is this this uh, this regularization. In a way, it's uh, another phase of the black hole information paradigm. Now, the fact that black holes uh, appear uh, to be infinite entropy reservoirs, uh, from certain perspectives, actually from many perspectives, was also made uh, by Wheeler uh, uh, in, in, uh, in a different uh, kind of formulation. Basically, the argument is that there are slicings in the inside the, the, the black hole that grows spatial slicings or spatial slicings inside the black hole that grow indefinitely uh, in size, and then we can imagine uh, locating there um, an infinite amount of entropy. Basically, we can excite an infinite amount of modes uh, inside the black hole. Um, this is. Well, here we see that the, this seems to be uh, there seems to be a class with the with the fact that the, the entropy scales as the area and and it is finite, and this is in a way uh, a, a very sharp way of framing the tension that there is between holographic ideas and the locality uh, uh, in the in the black hole interior. Now, an interesting, an interesting difference uh, from this infinity, from this type of infinity with respect to the infinity of uh, understanding black hole entropy as entanglement entropy is that in this case, there is no natural regularization, uh, at least again, not that I know, there is no natural regularization uh, that provides an area law. So uh, in a way, this infinite sharpens the problem. Uh, we really need to face it. Uh, and this is going to be uh, key uh, below afterwards. Um, now, first principles approaches uh, to this problem came through a string theory uh, where black hole entropy can be found by counting uh, string theory states, basic on one hand, uh, or on the other, uh, this is kind of uh, uh, could be 
located into what is known as stroming buffer type counting, or uh, with the uh, by counting uh, geometries with certain type of properties like uh, no no horizons or no singularities, and this could be uh, um, put into some kind of umbrella called the the Fosbol approach. Uh, the problem is uh, with these uh, uh, celebrated approaches is that uh, they can only, at least until now, they can only be applied uh, within very restricted uh, scenarios and fail uh, uh, to explain the universality of, of black hole entropy of the of the of the black hole entropy form. Finally, let me let me comment uh, that the Euclidean quantum gravity methods can be leveraged. Uh, we have learned in recent years uh, that they, these methods can be leveraged to find the page curve in black hole evaporation. Uh, and this is again uh, somewhat somewhat mysterious since one would have expected to require more microscopic information uh, to derive these results. So um, let me summarize a little bit the context of the problem uh, from a mo more modern perspective. So the, the most general way to compute black hole entropy that we know now uh, and, and also generalizations like the page curve is through the gravitational path integral, uh, so the, through, through the gravitational Euclidean path integral. Uh, and this is irrespective of the UV completion. Uh, the question is, uh, of course, how this path integral knows so much. And uh, it is uh, today we are not going to solve that question, but uh, uh, making progress in that question, uh, which we believe we, we have done some progress in that question. In that question, uh, we will uh, will lead to to a solution of uh, of the microscopic origin of black hole entropy. So, um, are there are there questions about the context? So if, if not, let me let me continue. Uh, given this context, uh, le, uh, let me describe the, the plan of the talk. So we are um, we are we are going to start by sharpening the problem of uh, naive overcountings of black hole entropy, these uh, infinities that, we, that I have mentioned. Uh, we are going to sharpen this problem by explicitly constructing uh, infinite families of uh, microstate geometries. Um, we will we will define later what do we mean with that. Um, as, the, as, the, as the name suggests, these families will be geometrical, so there will be geometries uh, in the precise sense of the word, and they will be under semi-classical control. Okay, so um, so this uh, we will we will argue this serpents the problem for several reasons, and uh, but we will then show that these states are not orthogonal to each other as as could have been anticipated. But uh, the main technical uh, uh, progress that we have done is that uh, we can derive a universal result for these quantum overlaps uh, that will arise uh, from the existence of uh, new, wormhole, new wormhole solutions in the uh, gravitational path integral. Uh, this universal result that we will derive uh, kind of uh, recontextualize uh, the, Gibbon, the Gibbons Hawking partition function, uh, and it will be our main technical result. Uh, finally, in the th in the third part, uh, we will use that result to show uh, that the Hilbert space dimension is what uh, the, uh, what what should be, and we will end with some discussion. So um, let's get started. So in this talk, uh, we are going to concentrate on studying the entropy of eternal black holes in ABS. Um, the, uh, we have already uh, generalized this to other kind of space time, so don't think that this is uh, really attached to ABS-CFT. But in this talk, I want to stick on, on this part because uh, uh, ABS-CFT will will give uh, a lot of credibility to the arguments that we are that that we are going to give. Uh, in particular, to in this context, to get uh, to get inspiration as to how to construct microstates, uh, we are going to use intuition from ABS-CFT. So ABS-CFT uh, just says in this, in this context that quantum gravity with two asymptotic uh, um, anti-de-sitter uh, boundaries is dual to a couple of uh, conformal field theories. The total Hilbert space is just uh, the tensor product of the individual Hilbert spaces, this, tens this uh, tensor product here. So let us think for one moment in the energy basis, um, even if this is very unclear, what, what is this in the, in the gravitational uh, description let us think on that before um, in this uh, thinking in this in this uh, in this uh, in this energy basis it, it is very natural to consider the following state that uh, that arise by doing uh, a certain Euclidean evolution say till the uh, beta right 
then um, inserting an operator O, and then doing further Euclidean evolution, say tilde beta left uh, um, again. For example, just to give an example of this type of, and this type of states, you would write in this way here in the energy basis. Uh, an example that we all know is that uh, is the arises when we choose the operator O to be the identity. And uh, in this case, uh, if, if we denote uh, tilde beta left plus tilde beta right uh, to be beta, uh, then we get the well-known uh, thermophile level construction for inverse temperature beta, okay? But of course, by inserting operators O uh, in a wild manner, uh, we can get many, many states. Um, before before uh, explaining what kind of restriction we are going to put in these states, um, concerning our objectives, the, there are two, I want to remark uh, two interesting features of these states. Uh, the first is that uh, from ABS CFT, uh, we know that all of them contribute to the entropy of, bla of the black hole. Um, so, or, or let me say it another way. We know that all of them are part uh, of the Hilbert space of the quantum gravity theory. And if we are in the, in the high energy uh, domain, uh, they will contribute to the Hilbert space of the black hole. So whatever, whatever is the geometric description of those states, we know that they are uh, uh, states corresponding to the uh, Hilbert space of the black hole. Um, I'm saying this because uh, in, in the past, uh, for sure, in the, in the, in the long past, uh, this type of arguments by Wheeler uh, in which uh, you build crazy geometries inside the black hole were, were not considered seriously because they were saying that maybe these geometries, they will not be formed uh, in the black hole uh, uh, formation and evaporation. They will not, they don't really contribute to the black hole Hilbert space. They are kind of different universes. Here, uh, we are going to uh, frame ourselves in, a, in, a, in an ABS CFT, CFT setup in which we know that those states actually uh, are there and we should consider them. Uh, the second feature is that uh, these states uh, can be constructed via the path integral. Uh, and this, uh, I, well, maybe there are here uh, many experts on, on this kind of construction, but uh, uh, there is a usual problem of uh, finding a Hilbert space, uh, um, uh, yeah, interpretation of, 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 I mean, a Hilbert space construction of gravity. And I think, uh, and uh, like this, this kind of uh, construction, uh, via constructing states via the path integral is, um, is a natural bridge between uh, a canonical Hilbert space formulation of the theory and a path integral formulation. And this, yeah. this is so, so, so I have a question. Yeah. So if, if what you say is exactly true, wouldn't this mean that the, essentially the entropy of the black hole is counted from the, by the dimension of the total Hilbert space? I mean, if all the yeah. states yeah. contribute, you just need to count the dimension right or it's going, to, it's going to be like that it's going to be like that and we are going to actually to get yeah twice the twice the yeah uh, twice the black hole entropy because we are counting basically twice the thermal entropy because there are two two cfts one could do it for for single side black holes okay maybe maybe we can discuss uh, that question later uh, i think it will be clear uh, for a moment I'm, I'm i'm being a little bit uh, i think it will be clear so um so this state, let me just say that these states are generalizations to any dimension of the states uh, described in JP gravity in this article here, uh, which we inspired from them. And uh, of course, uh, let me say that we can further uh, locate uh, more operators in different, uh, in different Euclidean times, and we will do that also. Um, so actually following your question, uh, Epanos, uh, well, a little bit uh, part of it at least, um, in this way, we can construct any state, basically any state we want. So this is too wide. Um, we just want, now we are going to specify a little bit more. We just want those states uh, or those operators um, that uh, uh, co construct a geometry with uh, basically in which we have uh, something in the interior, whatever it is, and uh, the black hole geometry outside the horizon, okay? Uh, and, and this way, if we if we accomplish this, uh, we will call this uh, a black hole microstate. So it, it is a it is a state that it is like the thermophile double in the sense outside of the horizon is exactly like the thermophile double with a black hole geometry. So from the outside perspective, it's a black hole, 
but uh, uh, it will, the geometry will differ, will differ in the inside. And uh, uh, we also want, uh, we want to constrain those states a little bit more. We want those states, uh, for reasons that will be clear later, uh, we want those states that are uh, um, that have simple uh, semi-classical and geometrical description. Um, let me say that one one um, one remark that is important: the, the microstates. Uh, uh, I will recall this in the, at the end of the talk also, but it's important to notice that the microstates. Uh, one of the points of the article is that the microstates that we construct are not unique. Um, there might be other constructions, um, so it's not that our microstates are kind of fundamental. Uh, we are just we are just claiming that uh, any set of, of microstates uh, will do the job. Of course, you need a set of microstates in which you can do the computations, and this and uh, and, and and here is where where the states that we are considering um, have some advantage in front of others. Um, so, in that sense, it will be important to have semi-classical and geometrical uh, descriptions. And to this end, we um, we consider operators that. Um, that actually they were known uh, from before. Uh, they are just operators that create, uh, some, sometimes are called domain walls. We call them uh, spheric, uh, spherically symmetric uh, dust cells uh, because they are really cells of, uh, of, of dust. Um, this can be accomplished uh, conventionally by, by coupling gravity to some low energy effective field theory, uh, such as a scalar field or a fermion field. So this is, we are not introducing anything, uh, anything here. Uh, and we will also require the dust cells to be sufficiently heavy. Um, this in principle uh, seems to complicate the problem, but actually uh, it, it will complicate at the beginning the problem uh, because we need to consider the back reaction, but it will simplify the problem later. Um, so uh, yeah, for a moment, let me just say that we need to consider the back reaction of these cells on the geometry. So, um, the standard treatment of uh, dust cells uh, in the in, they, they they are they have been studied in, in cosmology and and uh, uh, in eternal inflation in general relativity in itself uh, so it is it is is this nothing nothing weird uh, the stra the standard treatment of these dust cells is by their effective description in terms of um, a pressureless uh, perfect fluid localized at the world volume of the cell. Uh, and uh, it's a stress trends, the, stress, the stress tensor uh, of the cell is given just uh, uh, by the usual expression, the perfect fluid uh, expression. In the present scenario, what we do is that uh, um, we create the cell uh, at the spatial infinity. So this is a Euclidean ADS, I remind you. Uh, um, it, it is the same construction as before. Let me just explain. This was a CFT kind of, uh, of diagram. So this, this was... Uh, the thermal cycle, and the and the and the circle was the uh, sphere of the of the CFT. Here, what we are doing is uh, filling in the geometry. Okay, so uh, we are now we are not putting this circle. This uh, you should understand that there is a there is a, a sphere in each point of the geometry. And uh, here, what we are doing is the so the, this is the thermal cycle, and uh, and then the, the interior is just the, the radius uh, as usual. So we are throwing we are throwing a, a cell uh, from from Euclidean sp spatial infinity, uh, and then we let it fall through the Euclidean geometry until time equal to zero, and then we uh, uh, just um, um, analytically continue. Uh, so uh, is this is this clear? Let me let me just say that uh, again. If I put here, not if I don't put a cell here. Then, uh, then this is just one black hole geometry here, and then uh, these two horizons are in the same place, and uh, and then I'm constructing the thermophile level. It's the usual way of constructing the thermophile level. I'm just providing for you another way to to go a little bit away from the thermophile level and to create the states that are uh, that share some properties with the thermophile level, but that are uh, slightly different. Um, it is it is uh, it is clear. Uh, it is clear or there are some questions? Yes, I, I have a question here, Javi. So should we actually think of these geometries as microstates or as sort of mesoscopic states? Because one might say that there are my, yeah. many uh, microstates I, that I, 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 I will, geometry country. I, I will call it I will call it a, a microstates uh, for the so I, I'm going to define so um, okay. 
Um, so I, I, I'm just calling that. So from the quantum mechanical theory, from the fundamental perspective, I'm just calling a microstate, a state in the Hilbert space that uh, uh, satisfy set certain mac macroscopic constraints. So for example, if I have a if I have a, a, a state in a microcanonical ensemble. I have a microcanonical ensemble. This is a span you could say by the energy eigenstates at that energy. But, and you would say, well, the microstates are the energy eigenstates. I would say, no, the microstates uh, at a given energy are any linear superposition. In quantum mechanics, they are any linear superposition of those, of those energy eigenstates. So this, would, this will be a linear superposition, but it will be a, 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 a microstate in the sense that it, it is a state in the Hilbert space uh, satisfying certain constraints, okay? I'm just defining it that way. We can, we can leave that question uh, uh, for, from the, uh, for, the, for the discussion, uh, which is more philosophical, but I just want to say that these are really, so, so I, I would even take out the word micro or meso. These are just states in the Hilbert space. You can understand it. I mean, you can, you can, okay? And I can, I, to count the states, I don't, uh, there is no fundamental basis in a Hilbert space. There are any basis. And also I can take over complete basis, okay? And all, 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 all are states in the very same, in the, in the very, for example, just to put another example. If I want to, if I, if, if I would say that my, my system is a gas in a room, uh, you would clearly say that uh, specifying the momenta and the position uh, uh, of all the particles is a microstate. And that will not be an angular state, certainly. And uh, um, it's, it's kind of the same thing. It's not a mesoscopic state either, because uh, it, it, it is just a state of the system. Okay. Okay. Adi? Well, uh, yeah, another question? Yeah, there's a question by Arjun in the, in the chat. Yes. Uh, if, if you can read it, or I can. Ah, I can... Uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, I can read it. Uh, in the, the supposed to be the same. Uh, I, I don't know exactly the, the construction by, by, by Tom, uh, probably. Uh, I mean, this, this is an operator that, I mean, this is, this is just, uh, this is just, uh, um, this is basically a product of operators along the, the sphere, okay? Uh, and you create many particles in the sphere and those particles uh, have some energy and move freely because the density is very low. So it's a, a, yeah, a spherical dust cell. I don't know if that's that's what he considered. Probably, I mean, probably those those uh, this kind of uh, stress tensors uh, uh, is what they consider. Thanks. No, 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 no. Ah, sorry, sorry. Now I understand. No, no. This is not. It's very important. So, if if I yeah, if I locate this operator, so I'm locating this operator at equal to zero. You could say. Um, the point is that I'm locating. This is going to be important. I'm locating this operator in such a way that it, it is in the interior, okay? So the Baidia, the Baidia scenarios would, be, would, would appear if I place this operator in the right, okay? And then I have a, a collapse scenario. Uh, this would be the same, uh, I guess, as, as what you are commenting. But, I'm, but it's very important that I'm putting the operator so that the geometry in the exterior is the same as the black hole geometry. So there is no collapse here. I'm just, I just want to count microstates of a certain black hole. So I have to fix the stereo geometry. Um, uh, okay, if there are no more questions, uh, let me say that this geometry, even if it seems a little bit new, it's very simple to understand. So uh, basically the cell, what it does, it, it, does, it, it, it bejects the, the, the black hole. So you can, you can, in your mind, you can start with the thermophile level. Uh, but now you have a cell and it divides the thermophile level in two, okay, in two, uh, in two manifolds, uh, creating two components, no? X, X plus and X minus. Uh, now, but given the, given the spherical symmetry of the cell, uh, each component of this, of it's, it's the right or the left, is going to be uh, a Euclidean black hole with the usual metric, okay? So, it, it, so we have in, in this part, this, this Euclidean geometry is just the, the metric of a black hole. This left part, uh, potentially with a different mass, it's a Euclidean geometry of a, of a Euclidean black hole. 
uh, with the usual uh, blackening factor. Okay, so there is nothing, there is, the geometry is very simple. The only thing is that you need to glue them through the cell. Okay, so the only thing to be uh, understood here is the trajectory of the cell, which can be measured by uh, the radius of the cell and the, uh, and the coordinate time in terms, both of them in terms of, for example, the proper time. Okay, so we seek uh, equations for, for those variables. Uh, to see first, if, if, I mean, I have, I'm telling these states first because I know they, they exist, but we should be sure that they exist and uh, it is not clear. Okay, so we are going to see why they exist. Um, okay, so uh, the equations that, that uh, control the, the cell uh, follow from what is known as the Israel junction condition. So we need to glue two geometries. The two geometries are the one that you, that you all know. They are just the black hole geometry on one side and the black hole geometry on the other side, probably with different masses or probably with the same mass. Um, but I just need to glue them uh, because there is a stress tensor, there is, a, there is energy in the, in, in the middle. Uh, and, and these equations follow from uh, Israel junction conditions. Uh, these conditions uh, uh, instruct us how to, how to glue these two different geometries uh, across the cell. The first condition is very trivial. It just states that the, that the induced metric is the same, whether we compute it from one side or from the other. Um, the, second the second condition is the, is the non-trivial one because it relates uh, 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 geometrical features of the geometry to the stress tensor of the cell. Okay, uh, in particular, it constrains the jump in the string curvature uh, across the cell and relates it to the stress tensor of the cell. So if I put uh, uh, the, the geometry before in these equations, uh, I can I can find the equations that should be satisfied by the uh, by the, the um, variables uh, parameterizing the motion of the cell, which basically is the radius. Okay, so from these equations, uh, I, one can find the equation of motion of a non-relativistic uh, effective particle uh, with zero total energy, which is this equation here, for a particular potential, which is this one here. Uh, again, let me say that this is very uh, conventional um, in, uh, in cosmology or in internal inflation, for example, people were doing that, uh, I mean, in the in Coleman de Lucia uh, bubble nucleation, people were doing these kind of things, actually much more complicated. Uh, this is the only thing, the only uh, new thing here is that we are doing this inside the horizon, but, uh, uh, and, and that has, will have some, some, uh, some interesting uh, um, consequences but it's actually easier. So it, from this perspective, um, uh, so in this motion, in this simplified motion, uh, basically the, uh, the, the cell that was starting at Euclidean spatial infinity, it just, it, it just start uh, at infinite radius. And uh, so at R equal to infinity, and then it falls until a certain radius and then bounces back, okay? Uh, the, uh, and well, this, this, this motion in principle can be solved pretty neatly. Uh, for example, we can compute the Euclidean time elapsed in the cell trajectory uh, by these formulas. Um, let, me, let me say that the specific expressions uh, will not be utterly important in what follows. Uh, but, I, but one thing that is important are the consistency relations, uh, I want to remark, um, uh, between the, uh, the preparation temperatures and the, uh, and the, physical, and the physical temperatures. This, uh, uh, I'm going to explain now what I mean by this, but let me say that these are given by these relations here. So let me, let me come back to, uh, um, to, the, um, to the states that we were considering. Maybe uh, when you saw these states, or maybe some of you uh, ask, you, ask yourself why, why he's calling beta R, why he's putting a tilde. No? Uh, when I do the thermophile level, I just put beta, which is the inverse temperature of the black hole. I'm putting beta tilde because uh, uh, this is not, it's very important that this is uh, not necessarily uh, the inverse temperature of the uh, black hole that I'm constructing. Why is that? Uh, uh, exactly because I'm putting a cell here, very energetic cell, which back reacts. Uh, it, uh, it, it, it could be that I'm putting uh, uh, a lot of energy and that the, uh, the end, uh, the, um, the black hole that I'm creating with that uh, will be uh, will have a larger uh, mass than the one that I want to create. So to avoid that, I'm going to uh, 
evolve with uh, uh, some beta tilde, which is different than beta. Okay, and the consistent re consistency relation is exactly this: that uh, beta tilde plus the time uh, elapsed by the cell has to be the um, the physical temperature of the black hole that I'm considering. Um, the reason is basically geometry. Uh, of course, as we know, the inverse temperature, the physical inverse temperature of the black hole that I'm creating or that I'm constructing a microstate, it just just follows from the by integrating uh, the, the thermal cycle. But this I also can compute it by uh, the physical temperature, I mean, the preparation temperature, beta tilde, plus the elapsed time of the cell. Okay. Um, is this, is this uh, clear? Maybe I was a little bit confusing, but this is, this is a little bit crucial. Um, it is crucial because it says that uh, no matter the mass of the black, or not, no matter the mass of the cell that I'm putting inside, I can always find a sufficiently large uh, inverse uh, beta tilde so that uh, the resulting black hole is has inverse uh, inverse temperature. Uh, it has the inverse temperature that I wanted. This means that for basically I have constructed for you a continuous set of uh, black hole microstates uh, parameterized by the mass of the cell that goes from zero to infinity. Um, is this is this uh, are there questions about that? So, um, well, just just uh, this this is one. So this is one of the the infinite families that I was commenting. All these families, are, I mean, this family is parameterized by the mass of the cell. The mass of the cell goes from zero to infinity, and all these geometries have uh, have uh, uh, the black hole geometry outside the horizon. Okay. Uh, more generally, we can consider uh, multi-cell states uh, characterized again by the rest, the, the rest masses and trajectories. And again, we have uh, to construct these states. We have very uh, uh, basically very permissive constraints, which are these uh, these uh, saddle point equations relating again preparation temperatures and physical temperatures. Um, but again, they are very permissive and allow us to put uh, in the, uh, uh, to put cells inside the black hole. Uh, with any masses that we want without modifying the stereo geometry. Um, it, it, is, is this uh, clear? So this, I mean, I'm, I'm saying, uh, I'm, I'm asking because this is this is the end of the first part. This, these are our families of black hole microstates. Um, well, or not call it micro, call it just uh, uh, states uh, of black hole. They are geometric, they are purely geometric, they are under semi-classical control, and they are just labeled by, uh, by the set of masses of the inferior cells. So now, these infinite families of, uh, of black hole microstates uh, clearly uh, naively overcount uh, the becker stein hawking entropy because they are infinite. Okay, and also uh, they are notice that they are semi-classical, uh, so they are basically classical states. Okay, um, it is very strange that we found so many. So these these families can be seen as uh, you can you can you can uh, interpret them as new versions of uh, Wheeler's uh, back of bold uh, geometries. Uh, what what is interesting is that in this case, as I mentioned before, uh, these uh, these families are I mean uh, are geometrical solutions. That are under semi-classical control. They are not like particles, like uh, quantum particles, uh, quantum excitations above the thermofield level, uh, which would lead to the same problem. But uh, uh, but here they are even uh, classical solutions. Okay. Um, so in this ADS CFT construction, it is difficult to argue that these states do not belong to the black hole field space. So we have to face the problem that they indeed contribute uh, to the dimension of the field space. Uh, it seems infinite. The question is, uh, it, it is really infinite. Uh, do they really overcount? Uh, and to analyze this question, we need to, to compute the quantum overlap. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. Uh, just a question. So, yes. um, are, are you keeping track when you're, when you're talking about the microstates? Are you keeping track of individual locations of these particles on this on the sphere, or 
Are, are you just labeling them by the no, total? No, 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 the, no, no, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there are many states, yeah, that would be important uh, later. There are many states that have the same effective description. Uh -huh. Okay. But you can, uh, but uh, that will not affect to the argument because you just can, see, can consider that you take one of them. They all have the same effective description. There are okay. many. The same your effect. basis is going to just be taking like one. Exactly. One because, yeah. exactly. Because I could, I can construct, I mean, I can actually construct one just by saying I pick, I put the operator here, 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 here. Yeah. And that would be one. Okay. So it would be one state. Of course, you are right. I could modify the, the configuration and it will have the same. That that just says that actually I have constructed for more. you many more infinite families. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, otherwise uh, uh, it will not affect the, the argument. Um, okay. So um, let, let's now uh, change gears. Uh, so we have we have produced these infinite families of black hole microstates labeled by the by the cell masses, uh, and we now seek to compute the basically these quantities. Okay, the, these are the overlaps between uh, states with different uh, um, cell masses and products of overlaps. The overlap notation here. Uh, means that uh, we compute these quantities using the gravitational Euclidean path integral. Okay, um, this uh, uh, so so this path integral then uh, this action contains the Einstein Hilbert uh, term, the Gibbons Hawking term in the boundary, a term that accounts uh, uh, this one here for the stress energy tensor of the cell, and the counter terms that uh, make this action finite in the sense of basically in the sense of holographic renormalization or in the sense of uh, more generally of Euclidean quantum gravity. Um, so in the semi-classical approximation in which we are going to work, uh, we, uh, we are instructed to sum over uh, the exponential of the action of the classic of all the classical saddle points X satisfying the boundary conditions um, determined by the states basically with the insertion of these cells. Uh, so we have to find those other points, okay? So uh, be, I'm going to, before I'm going to have a, so in this slide, I'm going to have a um, kind of heuristic discussion and then we, go, we will go to the, to the specific uh, solutions of the cells. Uh, so let me start with the, with, the, with the first inner product. So if the masses of the cells are different, we need some way to join the, uh, the different cells from the Euclidean boundary. And this requires, um, in principle, this is impossible if the, if the scalar field is free because uh, the, the, there is no way to create or destroy uh, particles because particle number is, 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 is conserved. Um, this is, of course, broken by gravity, by interactions uh, mediated by gravity. But in any case, uh, it will require a number of bulk interactions um, of order of the mass difference in, in flux units. So um, this interaction basically destroy particles in a cell and create particles in the other so that I can join them uh, in, the, in the middle. Uh, but then this inner product uh, by general arguments um, decreases exponentially fast or at least uh, decreases, let me just say decreases because this has led to some discussion, but uh, we are uh, uh, converging uh, uh, um, uh, to uh, to convince uh, everyone that uh, at least it decreases uh, with the mass difference. Uh, but the point of our argument is that since there, since there is no upper bound in the mass for us, and we have an infinite number of states, uh, we can choose a discrete family with parametrically large uh, mass difference so that these states are orthogonal as computed by the low energy uh, semi-classical path integral. So basically the first, the, first, uh, the first inner product is just the delta. Um, so very simple. Um, are, are there are there complaints about this? This this kind of relation is is just saying that uh, it's basically you can you could say that uh, uh, this is just like a thermal correlator, and, and as time evolves, uh, it goes to zero uh, with some law. Okay, and here time would be the mass difference. Okay. It's, uh, it's something very, on very general grounds in quantum theory, it will hold uh, uh, this, this relation. Um, now, one would think that if the, if the first inner product is a delta function, then the others, these other quantities, uh, will be delta functions as well. But this is not the case. 
uh, the square of the inner product has a delta function term uh, for the same reason as before. Um, if, of course, if the, if the mass difference is very, very large. But even if the mass uh, difference is very large, in, even infinite, uh, it might display a second term. Uh, this second term is controlled by the action of, a, let, me, let me say now, a potential wormhole connecting the two boundaries uh, determined by the inner products, uh, if such a solution exists. Okay? Uh, this would be a, a two boundary wormhole. Uh, and uh, here, here the action is, uh, I say, set, set two, uh, I divide it by say one, set one, which is just the normalization of the states. Uh, I will explain this in the next slide. Um, but if such solution exists, then we have a contribution, which probably is non-vanishing, even if the mass difference is infinite. Um, more generally, the end moment uh, of the inner product is given, uh, I mean, will be given by uh, uh, the ratio of the end boundary wormhole and the normalization of the end different states prepared uh, by the, uh, the boundaries, if such a solution exists. Okay. Um, so uh, before going to the wormholes, let, let's compute this set one, this normalization, uh, which uh, you all know how to do, um, because these are, these are kind of uh, conventional. To do this, we just prepare uh, the bra and the cat, with the, now both with the Euclidean preparation of the states. Uh, so before we were cutting at equal to zero and continue Lorentzian, uh, continuing the Lorentzian time, now we just uh, uh, prepare uh, both in Euclidean and we join them in the, in the, in the middle. Uh, if the mass of the cells in the cat and the bra are the same, then this is very easy. We just, I mean, the, 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 the cell just goes from one side to the other. Uh, and, the, and, uh, and also this is a solution of the equations of motion because it's the same equations of motion that we already solved. The norm of the state uh, uh, of the state at equal to zero is just the action of this solution. Okay, uh, to compute it, we um, we notice that the action can be naturally decomposed uh, in this way here. So I can decompose the geometry in three ways. I mean, in three parts. Uh, this is a black hole geometry. This is a black hole geometry. Uh, this part uh, contains the cell. It contains a part that is still the black hole geometry, and also it contains uh, the the stress energy tensor of the cell. So um, the first two terms, so the action decomposes, uh, is, is an integral, it just decomposes uh, additively in these three terms. The first two terms are just the action of the black hole for, certain, for, the, for the appropriate mass and uh, multiplied by, the, by just a, 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 the preparation temperature. And then the, the part of the action, I mean, the part of the cell uh, can also be computed because it's just again uh, a black hole part plus the uh, the action corresponding to the cell. Uh, it, it is not. It is. I mean, just wanted to put the formulas to say to you that everything can be computed uh, basically to the end. Uh, some of these things uh, will not will not play a role in the in the final argument. Um, now the next step. So this would be set one. So this, is, this, this gives you a normalization uh, of the state uh, for every mass uh, of the cell. And also you can work with multi-cell states and compute it in the same way. So the next step is to compute the action of the wormhole. Um, these are solutions. So uh, wormholes, uh, here we, we mean, I think what people call them uh, space-time wormholes or Euclidean wormholes. Um, these are solutions to the Euclidean equations of motion connecting two different boundaries. In this case, Two different boundaries in which in each boundary I'm uh, I'm putting this uh, these cell states. Okay, these wormholes uh, were found uh, uh, by Martin uh, in other context. Um, the wormhole simply arises. It's again very simple to construct. Actually, it's pretty, pretty striking. Um, it simply arises by uh, cutting cutting two Euclidean black holes with uh, with the two cells. That prepare the states and then identifying uh, itself. Okay, so he, here here we have uh, one boundary. In this boundary, we we const we prepare some state with one cell. In the other one, in the same boundary, we prepare in the bra the the second um, the second state with a different mass. But now and then we have the other boundary which is repeated and we join them instead of uh, through the uh, we join them as a as a cylinder. Okay. And the fact that uh, that uh, we and the fact that uh, uh, we have the cells 
uh, basically makes it very easy to uh, convince oneself that there is such a solution. Basically, the cells um, sustain the geometry. Okay. So let me say that people, one of the problems um, in recent years uh, has been to, um, well, at least uh, to my knowledge, uh, has been to try to extend um, the knowledge from two dimensions that have that we have gathered in the past uh, five years, in particular, all the all the nice uh, uh, conceptual and technical uh, learnings uh, from wormholes. Uh, so the, the objective has been to, to try to extend that to higher dimensions, and it has been very difficult. But uh, it is very easy if we consider uh, if we kind of uh, go a slightly away from the usual paradigm and, and put these uh, cells. Then, it, then the solution exists uh, in any dimensions, and uh, basically they give us everything that uh, that uh, we can get in. We were getting in two dimensions. Uh, well, let me say that again. Um, uh, there are some other point equations in the same way that determine the mass, the, the, the mass of the temp uh, or the temperature of the, let me say the uh, the black hole that forms the wormhole, which is not the same that of the black hole that in which we are computing the microstates, in terms of the preparation temperature. And let me say that the action of this wormhole can can be computed very much in the uh, as the previous uh, in the uh, in the previous manner by decomposing the the, the geometry. And it can be computed really basically until the end. So, um, so, so this one whole action can be computed for any mass uh, and for any, and basically for multi cell states. Um, sometimes it has to be done numerically. In three dimensions, it can be done analytically. But um, a key simplification uh, occurs, in the limit, occurs in the limit of, of very large mass. In this limit, we have this, uh, this simplification here. Basically, the the cells, the, the time elapsed by the cell goes to zero. Uh, basically, the, the, the cell back reacts really a lot in the geometry and, uh, and uh, it pinches off uh, uh, the geometry, leaving two Euclidean circles. Okay. So, this is, this is actually uh, well, with, with uh, for, and following the saddle point equations with inverse temperature, it's, it's circle uh, given by twice the original black hole temperature. Okay. And therefore, the inner product square in this limit uh, simplifies to this expression here. So uh, this is a, this is the universal this is the universal answer for uh, large mass. Uh, it's it's uh, well here. Sorry, c now is c of beta or c of two beta is the usual given stocking partition function. So. Um, let me say that this result uh, recontextualizes the given stocking Euclidean partition function. So here it is not interpreted. Uh, as a partition function counting states, but it is interpreted at, as, the, as the size of the quantum overlaps between certain infinite families of uh, black hole microstates. Okay, uh, let me say that uh, um, for the part of the of the audience that is familiar with the spectrum form factor uh, in uh, chaotic systems uh, on, or black holes, let me say that this wormhole uh, provides directly for you. Uh, the plateau of the spectral form factor, okay, which is what people uh, were looking for, and, and this solves to some extent uh, a particular version of the information paradox, which was proposed by by Juan Maldacena uh, in the context of ABS-CFT. Um, uh, more details uh, will be found. I mean, can be, uh, yeah, uh, we can discuss about this more later. I just wanted to mention for the people that uh, that are um, uh, used to to this kind of uh, algorithms. Other questions about this? Uh, Javier? Yes. Um, it, uh, um, so in JT gravity, to obtain the plateau, uh, you need to um, use a matrix model completion. Um, and the but the and what what the path integral gives you is 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 the ramp. Yes. Yeah, yes, but again, that is without without uh, that is just gravity, okay? A gravity calculation. Uh, but actually, if you put gravity plus a scalar field, uh, seems things uh, simplify, and you can find the plateau uh, uh, directly. But is it is it the non perturbative plateau? Because you could imagine that a completion will will correct the value of the of the plateau. 
Well, it it is it is a uh, no 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 it, it won't if the if the entropy it is uh, if, if if it doesn't correct the entropy. The plateau is just a, a the plateau is just a, a manifestation of the. Now we are going to see. Actually, we are going to uh, see that now uh, very neatly. The plateau is just a manifestation of the um, of the domain of the microscopic uh, dimension of the Hilbert space. So if if you don't modify that. Uh, it will it will remain the same. Uh, so if I put a scalar field, but the black holes that I have in my theory have the same entropy, uh, given by the partition, by, given by the gibbons Hawking partition function, the plateau will be the same. Okay, thank you. Um, are, are there more questions? Um, so to compute, we also need to compute higher moments. Uh, uh, we need a generalization of the previous wormhole to n boundaries, uh, and this is very again very simple to construct by a cutting gluing procedure uh, similar to the previous one. Um, so and, and here, for example, I put the six boundary wormhole. Again, uh, these solutions are very uh, uh, yeah uh, have uh, been very difficult to find for for for, for uh, in the literature. And actually, if you put, if you just include also, instead of just looking for these solutions, just with gravity, you uh, uh, put the scalar field or something uh, like that, that, that allows you to, to construct these cells, then these wormholes are very easy to construct and, and, and they assist in general relativity. And again, uh, what is important is that in the limit uh, of large cells, cell masses, uh, all trajectories, uh, all these trajectories of the cells uh, pins and the one hole action becomes uh, this expression here in terms of the uh, gibbons clocking partition function. Okay. So again, this result recontextualizes the gibbons clocking uh, partition function as uh, instead of as, uh, as, as the partition function of the theory, uh, more as the, um, the function that controls the noise uh, uh, of uh, the black hole uh, uh, microstates. Uh, let me remark that the Quite, quite uh, uh, well, consistently, but also uh, strangely, uh, the same result appears if I consider uh, multi, multi cell states. So it doesn't change whether I consider uh, one cell state or, or multi cell states. So um, with this, I finish the, the second part. Uh, so uh, let me summarize a bit. We have first constructed these infinite families. Now I have I have computed for you uh, as, uh, uh, within the limit of, of, uh, of uh, the, gravitation, the effective gravitational path integral the the um, the end moments of the of the inner products between these these states, and now uh, I want to face the question of whether these uh, infinite families of states really overcome the whole entropy or not. So basically, the problem now is an algebra, an algebra type problem. I have a set of states. Uh, infinite. Uh, that that the fact that it's infinite is it, of course not a problem. Just a q one qubit has a, a, has infinite number of states, uh, and still the Hilbert space is two dimension. Uh, so the question here is um, what what I need to compute uh, having certain uh, set of states with certain inner products. What I need to compute to um, uh, uh, to derive uh, to derive the Hilbert space dimension. Um, to the, this slide is not going to be uh, fundamental. Um, I'm just going to include it. it. It has created confusion in the past. I'm just going to include it because it's what is happening, but we don't really need this assumption that I, I, I mean, this, this slide that I'm going to explain now. Uh, let me just say that what we have seen uh, that is very strange is that inner, pro, inner products in the, in the semi-classical approximation do not factorize, okay? This is a strange, of course, in a fundamental uh, in the fundamental theory, the inner products uh, should be uh, should factorize, uh, and we can understand this non-factorization uh, simply by invoking the Einstein thermalization hypothesis. Uh, for the ones that uh, I cannot, I don't have time to, to explain in, in detail what this uh, proposal is. Let me just say that the, that this hypothesis uh, is the statement. That in chaotic theories, uh, the matrix elements of, uh, of a certain class of operators, uh, O uh, in the energy basis, have, have basically this structure here. Okay, they have a diagonal part, a smooth diagonal part in the energy basis, and then they have a, 
um, another another part that is uh, that is uh, chaotic in the sense that it has a, a, some random noise here. Um, uh, these people is people uh, uh, familiarized with the Einstein normalization hypothesis or um, maybe I'm going to I'm going to jump this uh, because uh, yeah uh, maybe we can discuss uh, at the end of the talk I'm, I'm just saying that this non-factorization uh, fits well with uh, something that is very well known in the past uh, 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 from the past uh, 20 years and that uh, it, it feels in the, it, it fits well in the sense that uh, the gravitational path integral computes uh, computes um, a statistical average in the in this Einstein thermalization ensemble that people have talked about. Uh, but uh, let's come back to the question uh, uh, that we put before. So so uh, we have a, a set of states. Uh, let's call it psi p. And we are asking for the uh, Hilbert space dimension that uh, they span. And this, uh, just by linear algebra, is given by the rank of the gram matrix uh, of overlaps. So I construct this gram matrix of overlaps, and I just need to compute the rank. Um, so I'm going to do that. Uh, so I'm going to, to, to I'm going to do that as a function of the number of state of microstates that I take. So I can take, I say, one to omega, and then uh, of course, I can take omega to infinity because I have infinite infinite states. Okay, um, so we have to do that, but with the information that uh, we have to input the information that gravity says that uh, basically that this gram matrix uh, have uh, certain moments given by these uh, uh, moments uh, uh, controlled by the gibbons hawking partition function. Okay, so. Um, to do it, to do to do this computation is an exercise in uh, in basically in random matrix theory. Uh, we don't really need random matrix theory, but uh, uh, it's an exercise in, in linear algebra. We need to one way is to compute the resolvent of the matrix. Well, basic. Let me say it before. So we have this matrix, and the rank of the matrix is the number of uh, non-zero eigenvalues that it has, um, which is the same as the total number of eigenvalues minus the number of zero eigenvalues. So what I need to compute is the number of zero eigenvalues. To compute the number of zero eigenvalues, what I can do is to first compute the resolvent and try to find the uh, uh, the poles in the in the resolvent. So the resolvent of, of a matrix is defined uh, by this equation here. Uh, so it's just the inverse of this uh, of this quantity, and it can be expanded in terms of the moments of the matrix. Um, diagram diagrammatically, this can be depicted in this in this way. Uh, in this simple way by some uh, Feynman diagram expansion. And uh, now we can use the input from gravity, saying that uh, we compute this resolvent by using the gravitational approximation. Uh, this, uh, this means that we have to fill in all these, uh, all these blocks, but we have to take care because we can fill in these blocks uh, in different ways because there are these wormholes that we discover. Okay. So, um, so we have this field, and now we, we have this filling, and now we have to resum all these diagrams. Uh, this resumation uh, was done in this paper here, uh, in the PSSY paper, uh, is the same resumation, uh, um, the same type of diagram resumation, they just did it for JT gravity, but the same happens for general relativity plus a scalar field. Um, this is a Swinger Dyson uh, type equation uh, that can be that can be solved. Let me not enter in the details. Uh, let me just say that uh, because I'm running out of time. Um, let me just say that uh, it can be solved in in, in blurry detail, and uh, one can get the resolvent uh, very explicitly. And from the resolvent, uh, as usual, uh, by the jump in the resolvent uh, across the imaginary axis. I'm uh, sorry, across the real axis. Uh, one can get the density of states and the, the, the end result, let me jump this, this slide, uh, after the calculations, the end result is this density of states. So this is the density of states, uh, I mean the density of, uh, yeah, the density of eigenvalues for the gram matrix of uh, the black hole microstates, okay? Um, uh, let me just one moment. Um, in this in this in this function, I mean in this density of states, let me say that I have defined this S, this both S as the Bekenstein-Hawking entropy. It just arises in the computation. I didn't 
uh, I didn't invoke it anyway in, in any manner. I, it's just in the computation of this density of states. It happens that here it appears area divided by 4G. Um, and from this average density of states, uh, uh, we reach the following conclusion. Maybe you just need to, as I, as I said before, you just need to count the number of zero states. I mean, the number of zero eigenvalues. Uh, the total number of eigenvalues is omega. The number of zero eigenvalues is, uh, um, sorry, the, the rank of the matrix would be omega minus the number of zero eigenvalues, which is this quantity here. Is the, so this, this density of states has a continuous part and a, um, and a singular part. Uh, and the singular part is the one that contains the zero eigenvalue. So I just need to count these ones here. And um, uh, the, the, um, the end result is that if I take a number of microstates, omega, that is, um, uh, that is smaller than the exponential of the Becker state Hawking entropy, then the rank of the matrix is equal to the dimension, um, sorry, and the rank of the matrix is exactly equal to omega. So it's uh, exactly equal to the number of microstates that I took. So these microstates span. So I took omega microstates and they span a, a, dimension, a Hilbert space dimension uh, omega. Uh, but if omega is greater than uh, the exponential of the Becker state of entropy, then the rank of, uh, of the gram matrix is not equal to omega anymore, but it, it plateaus, it saturates, and it is equal to uh, the exponential of the Becker state of entropy. In other words, even if I take more and more states, even an infinite number of states, uh, these states will not uh, uh, do not allow me to build a new uh, orthogonal Hilbert space direction. They are just uh, um, uh, difficult, uh, I mean, complicated nonlinear combinations of the ones that I already took. Um, uh, maybe I was fast in that. Uh, are there questions about that? Yeah, let me, I, let me, let me, maybe I summarize the logic and, and maybe and then uh, you uh, maybe we'll come back to the questions. So uh, the derivation of, of this end result um, has gone through uh, three steps. We have first constructed uh, these infinite families of, of microstates um, that were geometrical and the semi-classical control. And it seemed they were, uh, they allow us to uh, uh, build a Hilbert space with uh, well, infinite dimensional or much with dimension much bigger than the, uh, the, the, the Bekenstein Hawking uh, degeneracy. We then computed uh, the inner products between these states and these inner products, uh, well, were, they had a very particular form in terms of the Gibbons Hawking partition function. And now what we did is to, to actually compute, given that, uh, that those inner products, to actually compute what is the dimension of the Hilbert space spanned by those microstates. And we see that uh, um, uh, depending on the number of, of microstates that we take, uh, it will be, the, it, this dimension will be equal to the number of the microstates uh, when that, that number is smaller than the Becker state Hawking degeneracy, and it will saturate to the, the, to the Bekenstein Hawking degeneracy uh, exactly when it reaches. And at that point, even if there are many more infinite number of states, uh, they will not contribute uh, to, they will not allow me to build a, a farther orthogonal Hilbert space direction. Um, are there questions about the logic? Well, if, if, if not, um, let, me, let me end with, uh, with some summary uh, and discussion, um, if I have a couple of minutes. Uh, first, um, it is important to remark the universality of the construction. Uh, indeed, we have already extended uh, this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, arguments to models, to realistic models of black holes, such as uh, uh, Schwarzschild uh, black holes uh, in four dimensions in, in flat space. Um, an important remark, I think, uh, here is that these microstates that we have uh, considered uh, have black hole singularities in the future and also black hole horizons. And this, uh, this uh, kind of um, crosses uh, um, with, the, with the fastball uh, philosophy. So for basically, and, and you could say, well, uh, that, that says that your microstates are wrong. Let me argue that uh, the, maybe the, 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 the gravitational uh, state that we 
uh, loves more and that has uh, led to more uh, uh, citing results in the past 20 years is the thermophile double, is the, um, the Hartree Hawking state. And that state uh, has a horizon and has, um, has singularities. Our states basically are just a, a generalization of that, of the, of, of that state. And uh, well, um, this might be one of the reasons why the fastball approach did not succeed uh, for generic classes of, of black holes. This is some question uh, to think for the future. Um, another comment concerns uh, uh, black hole complementarity. Uh, we have produced a basis of microstates with interior cells. Uh, I didn't have time, uh, apologies. Also, maybe it was very fast in many things. Uh, apologies also for that. But these geometries are very particular geometries. Uh, the formulas are explicit. And basically what they do is when you put many cells is that the uh, einstein Prosser bridge uh, it grows, okay? And then these cells, um, when, when, when the mass of the cell goes to infinity, basically these cells are infinitely far away from, uh, from the horizon and then they are not, um, well, um, we believe they are uh, very good probes of, one, of black hole complementarity because um, they, they are completely um, kind of, uh, com we could say complexity protected or geometrically protected uh, from any type of measurements uh, in the outside. That's why everything, everything works. It's also interesting for the for the for the future. Um, so yeah, it points out to some microstate version of black hole complementarity. Uh, it is also interesting to remark uh, uh, that uh, there is an interesting interplay with quantum chaos and the state thermalization hypothesis that I didn't have time to, to expand on. Uh, and in particular, we would like to better understand why gravity is computing uh, average in this ensemble. Okay. Um, and finally, uh, related to the question of uh, the plateau, it would be interesting to further develop uh, actually these connections uh, with Mandacena's version of the, of the information paradigm. Um, and with this, uh, I finish. And thank you very much. And apologies if there were things that uh, were a little bit uh, jump on. Thank you, Javier, for a very nice talk. Um, do you have questions? Um, I, I have a question about the, the plateau. Um, yes. So may, um, maybe I misunderstood uh, what you meant by uh, plateau. Um, yes. so, uh, maybe if I, have, if I have a couple of minutes, can I explain the connection better? Because this is one of the things that I maybe I just uh, uh, jump very fast. Yeah, OK. Perfect. OK, um, okay. so what is, what is the, the, the plateau uh, physically? Uh, so you could say, well, uh, I take the partition function at temperature theta, I analytically continue in time, and then I compute the, the, the square, and then that, that quantity reaches a plateau. Well, that would be the mathematical, maybe, I mean, uh, because it reaches a plateau because the time average uh, uh, reaches a plateau. That would be like the mathematical explanation. But what is the physics behind it? The physics is, 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 is kind of very, very interesting. You could see the uh, you could you can see the um, uh, the spectrum for factor, okay, which is the partition function square uh, at time t. You can see that as the uh, survival probability of the thermophile double uh, when I time evolve it with the right Hamiltonian. Yes. You 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 know that connection? Uh, I, I mean I, I see it. Yeah yeah yeah. Yes. So you, you take the thermophile double, you take the thermophile double, you evolve it with the right Hamiltonian yes. in time, and then you compute uh, the survival, the, 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 you, you compute the amplitude that the state uh, remains the thermophile double as time evolves. Okay. Uh, the survival probability of that is the spectrum form factor. So the plateau, what it says from this perspective, it's just that you are making a, a chaotic evolution. You are taking the thermophile level, you are evolving it. The system is chaotic. You are exploring the, the Hilbert space, certain Hilbert space. And uh, at some point, uh, uh, you reach uh, randomness in that Hilbert space. Okay, And that randomness uh, is captured by the plateau. Yep. Okay. Now, here is a little bit the same. I could I, I, I'm just starting with the thermophile level. And, and instead of taking, um, taking a path that 
that is parameterized by time with a Hamiltonian that is the right Hamiltonian, I take a path that is also continuous, it's also a path in the Hilbert space, it's just another path that uh, is parameterized by this mass. Yeah. Okay, but, but since the, since the uh, macroscopic properties of that trajectory are the same, because they, they have the same uh, um, ADM energies, it's a, it's a path that is constrained by the by the by the uh, the ADM energies, uh, then uh, it will randomize. If it if it randomize, it will randomize in the same way, and it will give me the plateau necessarily. Yeah, I, I see the I see the the analogy with the the time evolution of the of the thermal field bubble. Um, so it's I, really it's really not it's really. Uh, 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 is is really not an analogy. I would I wouldn't call it an analogy. I, I it's really precise. I but mean, like, you just have to sit down and and and, and think about it. But it's it's really precise. The the same this you could have with the same uh, gravitational path integral method. You could have computed um, the spectral form factor the the using the definition in terms of uh, what it is in the CFT. You, you could have uh, imposed uh, the existence of two thermal circles as binary condition and computed the, the spectral form factor in this way. Um, yes, 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 yes. I'm, I'm, I'm doing, the, I'm doing something different. It's not the same. I'm not, I'm not computing the spectral form factor. I'm not saying that I computed the spectral form factor. Yes. I, I'm saying that I computed the plateau of the spectral form factor because the plateau of the spectral form factor is related to some physics that appears in other problems as well. Uh, for example, this one, but it's the but same physics. In a sense, aren't you? So it looks to me that the spectral form factor you're talking about is the one you would compute using this basis of state. You know, you, you can compute a trace. You, you can compute a, a partition function for this basis of state that you have constructed and, 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 um, and then construct a spectral form factor, and you you would get a plateau because the dimension is finite. So there there's no way to have any like you you, ha you have a discrete set of of state by by choosing them to be uh, sufficiently far apart like you did. You have constructed a sort of discrete basis of state, and so it's no surprise that you you reach a plateau um, with your definition of plateau. What I'm what I'm what I'm trying to say is that. Is that the same plateau? Is that really exactly the same? Plateau? I, I'm arguing. I'm trying to argue that it's the same plateau, and my argument is as follows. I'm, I'm just. I'm just. Uh, uh, so imagine. Uh, forget about this. This example. Imagine that you are in a chaotic system, and you start with the initial state, uh, and you evolve it with the Hamiltonian. This will. This will explore the full system, and it will give you some uh, some uh, survival probability that will plateau at some uh, in some at some point. It will it will plateau. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I can I can achieve that plateau. Yeah. Sorry. There is another question. I wanted to make a comment that uh, the plateau is actually more universal than chaos. Uh, the plateau occurs in any system with finitely many states. I agree. So so the chaos is actually the ramp. The plateau uh, doesn't need I, to I, anything. The plateau is the tautology. If you think about it, uh, it I, okay, it's just. I agree. I agree. This is oh, another. Uh, yeah, yeah. Plateau is just a tautology. Any system will have a plateau. Well, not gra Yeah, I mean, it's a tautology for uh, yeah for for systems with a discrete spectrum. I agree. Yeah, you yeah, don't I, need chaos. I'm only saying that you know, as long as you have effectively discrete number of states. It doesn't even have to be a chaotic evolution. You will I, get I, I, I agree. I agree. I agree. But I'm just saying, yeah, yeah, I agree uh, with that comment. Actually, this this evolution has no ramp, by the way. Uh, so it's very very pertinent the comment. Uh, we uh, this this uh, I mean this evolution. If you think this mass evolution in, as an evolution, this has no ramp, uh, but it plateaus, uh, and the plateau is just telling us the discreteness of the spectrum, like that. Uh, I'm just saying that it's the very same plateau as the one in the spectral form factor because it's the very same Hilbert space. How come there's no ramp? No, the, because I mean ramp ramp is 
not universal either. Ramp is for the spectrum form factor, but uh, you can consider uh, operators. Uh, I mean, you can consider evolutions uh, uh, that instead of starting from the thermophile level, you can start from the thermophile level times an operator, and that uh, might destroy the 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 the, the uh, subtle uh, uh, correlations that 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 lead to the ramp. The ramp is a very particular thing that uh, uh, happens uh, because there are certain particular correlations in the energy spectrum. But if you uh, have problems in which uh, you miss, you, you kind of uh, mix that with uh, anger states, operators, and, and other things, uh, the ramp can disappear, even in a chaotic system. Not in the spectral form factor. The spectral form factor will, will have the ramp. But I, the, the correlation function is that long enough time you will have a ramp. Even in no, correlation. No, not, in, not, not in every correlation function. I think any correlation function of simple operators will never ramp. Well, that, uh, I think that's very unclear. And uh, I think we have uh, arguments that, that that is not, uh, well, it doesn't happen in this one, for example. Okay. But, uh, but, 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 but there are, others, there are other, other examples. People have seen other examples in which they don't see ramps for operators. I, I I can I can look I can look for examples, but that that thing is it's it's unclear. It, it's typically th thought that the that the ramp and the ramp is a universal aspect. I mean, if the ramp is just uh, is just the, a consequence of the universal um, two point function of the density of the states, but but uh, there are many other problems. That, and but that is going to compete with other things in certain computations, and those other things might erase uh, the consequence of that. Of, of that thing, even at long, even at long times. Yeah, Phil saw there's a paper about that, but I think it's a it's it's a matter of time scales. The structure of operators usually does not have any features on such a long time scale where the ramp appears. So so unless you consider very complex operators, yeah, unless you consider very complex operators that are very finely tuned. But I mean, generally, exactly. if you just choose a, an operator, it's not necessarily even simple. I think uh, it will not have features on very short uh, frequency differences or very long time scales. So, mm -hmm. so I think uh, so. So it's a little bit odd that there's no ramp here because it kind of kind of get washed away by the particular state that you're considering. It's I mean, we are not we are not. I mean, we are not completely sure. I mean, the, uh, that the, there is no limiting with there is no ramp. We are not seeing it. It would be very nice if we find a ramp. I'm just, I'm just saying that uh, um, first that uh, I agree totally with you that the plateau has nothing to do with chaos and that the plateau uh, will uh, will appear just because uh, this is the system is is discrete. Uh, but that's what people wanted to achieve. That's what the the Maldacena's version of the information paradox uh, was about. What is what is giving you the saturation? Okay, in gravity, of course, in the dual theory, it's trivial, as you said. Uh, because it's discrete, but in gravity, what is giving you this? These wormhole solutions—they are giving you that. They are giving you the plateau, uh, yeah, whether no, there, whether there is a ramp or not. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, the fact that it's uh, that it's more universal is, is a strange theory. You don't have to assume chaos. It's uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I th I think uh, not having a ramp is a little odd. Mm -hmm. Think about the ramp. I mean, just yes, yes for you to maybe to, to not see it so odd. Uh, think as I was saying, as uh, think about the spectral form factor as uh, as a survival probability. Okay, uh, a survival probability of a process that happens in certain Hilbert space. Okay, so I have I start in some in some state, I evolve it uh, in certain direction with certain trajectory, and then uh, I compute the survival probability and. If I do that in a chaotic system with the Hamiltonian of the theory, it will have a ramp. But the survival probability, basically, if I allow myself to not to take a constant Hamiltonian, but to take a, any trajectory of the system, I can certainly make trajectories in which I'm going to erase the ramp. Um, it, it, it feels very uh, weird that, I, uh, that uh, to think that I cannot do that. In general, uh, most trajectories in the Hilbert space will, uh, uh, will uh, will reach a plateau because that is, it doesn't depend on chaos. It just depends on the fact that you have a finite dimensional Hilbert space, but the, the, but the plateau, but the ramp will not appear in those trajectories in the survival probability. 
Well, if you're a Hamiltonian that propagates you along the phase space is uh, complex enough, doesn't have to be the physical time generating Hamiltonian. Exactly. And eigenvalue for repulsion, which means there is a ramp. Exactly. exactly. Okay. I, I'm just saying that this, this, the Hamiltonian driving this, for example, the Hamiltonian driving this, uh, this mass, let's say, that kind of moves you through these cells, interior cells. Uh, it, it is it is a Hamiltonian first that is time dependent, so it will depend on the on the uh, on the instantaneous mass. So it will be different from mass zero from the thermofield level to infinitesimal mass, that from mass m to infinitesimal to mass m plus infinitesimal mass. It will be different, and uh, it has nothing to do with the Hamiltonian of the system. And uh, well, it is uh, probably will have ramp or not, but the but irrespective of the solution to that question, which I don't know by heart, we believe it don't, it doesn't, but irrespective of that solution, the plateau will be the same. Yeah, okay. Javier? Yes. Uh, so you, you, at the end, you had a density of state. Uh, I, will, I think it was yeah. called that. Is, the, is the density of states, uh, don't think about the density of states of the theory. It's the density of states, I mean, is the density of eigenvalues of the Gram matrix of the black hole microstates. And so, so how, okay, good. So I'm trying to understand how these um, uh, states you've computed uh, relate to eigenstates of the, um, of, of the CFT Hamiltonian. Very complicated, very complicated relation. These, these are not eigenstates. These are very, very complicated linear superpositions of eigenstates. And, uh, and, uh, I, and 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 our point is that our point is that uh, um, gravity will not be able to compute the phases that 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 allows you to build a superposition. So, in a sense, the how, how can you conclude about the behavior of the spectral form factor if you, if you don't have the density of? No, no, because it's not because it, I'm saying that I'm extracting the physics of the plateau. The the, the physics of the plateau it will appear for any trajectory in the Hilbert space that I'm, 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 I'm moving away. You are, you are stepping on, on the spectrum for factor, but the plateau is not, is not a property of the spectrum for factor alone. It's a property of any trajectory in the Hilbert space that is ergodic. So we agree that it's just, so I'm, I'm trying to, so it's just, the plateau just depends on having a finite, a, a, a dimension and a fixed finite dimension that we know. So exactly. So, and it so, will appear for any trajectory. It follows from the fact that you've constructed a finite basis that has the right dimension to account for uh, for the Gibbons Hawking entropy. All right. Uh, okay. So, so how I thought that at some point you said that you had arguments that were going against the uh, the existence of a ramp. Maybe I misunderstood. No, 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 that uh, we didn't see, I mean, uh, yeah, that we didn't see the ramp in this, uh, well, it's just a matter of computing it. I mean, where is this? Thing? So we, you just need to, to. Um, I mean, it's not clear, it's not clear. I mean, we haven't, yeah, I mean, I think, well, I think that here there are, there are uh, maybe we have, I mean, different visions, uh, 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 you guys seems to, to say that, uh, the saying that it has a ramp is the more, more, more conservative statement. I would say that is the contrary, but uh, maybe I'm, I'm wrong. I, I'm not sure. But this computation of the ramp is not, is not something simple because, because the fact that, that, are, that is leveraging the computation for us is that we can go. So typically, so exactly, typically when, when people compute the, the, the ramp, they can do that because that, those are the, the time scales in which they can compute. Okay, they can compute until the ramp, basically. In our case, it's the contrary. We can compute very easily uh, after, uh, like, uh, for very, very long times. Uh, and uh, uh, that's the nice thing. But unluckily, we cannot compute for uh, shorter times. Also mm -hmm. long, but, but shorter. And uh, I think that, uh, um, yeah. Um, you, you don't know the, the density of, of energy. You, you have no, no information on the density of energy of the theory. On the, on, on the, on the, well, the density is the 
with yeah, the leading, yeah, the leading, the, the leading is the Beckham State Hockey Intensity of States. The leading one, the but leading one is that. That's that's, that's what. That's, 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 uh, that's not. How how can you construct a continuous density of energy with a finite number of states? No, 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 not a continuous. I mean, the, it's an, uh, we, we are just saying that the, we are just saying that the, the, the uh, black hole entropy, I mean, the dimension of the Hilbert space is the one given by Peck State Hawking. And of course, that has a density of a state that, that uh, can be that in the, in the thermodynamic limit is continuous. Okay. Well, there's another point. I mean, so, so it's a little odd that you don't have any remnant of the fact that the black hole is chaotic system. Like, you know, you mentioned the ETH actually are the, a bunch of us at UBC wrote something about the connection of ETH. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So um, from that point of view, you would think that you need chaos in order to, you know, see that. I, I think I, I think that what is happening behind, that's a, that's a good point. Uh, I think what the physical origin of all this is chaos. Um, or, or some aspects of chaos, because chaos is a well, uh, complicated uh, uh, ground, but some aspects of chaos, certainly. Now, uh, the question of do we need it or not, I, I think we don't need it. We just did a, a gravitational computation. That gravitational computation allow us to construct certain set of states. Uh, and, that, and with that certain set of states, we, we computed by linear algebra methods the uh, rank of the of the overlap matrix that give us the, the 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 dimension. Now, what is the interpretation of that? I think chaos and the state thermalization hypothesis is is the correct interpretation. Do we need that? I, I don't think so. I don't think we 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 need it. So you have all these three dimensional theories that are known not to be chaotic, like you know, churn Simon's gravity and whatnot. Uh, that are dual to this uh, funny ensemble that people have, 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 have uh, constructed. Mm -hmm. uh, those theories should have the same story that you tell, right? It doesn't have to be. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. It's, it's, it's non trivial. I, I'm not, yeah, it's a very, that first is a very interesting question. Second, uh, um, let me say that it, it is um, very non trivial in the sense that maybe I haven't made it clear, but it's. These solutions that we construct are are really solutions to some equations of motion. And actually, if you change certain things, they might not exist. So it is it is unclear what is the applicability. Uh, 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 and yeah, and understanding that is an open problem. I'm I'm not sure whether you can construct interior cells in those theories you are describing. Uh, probably yes. Um, I'm not sure. It would be different. Otherwise, you're not sensitive to that being gravitational theory. Exactly. Exactly. I'm, I'm just saying that. I'm just saying that is. Uh, I'm just pointing out that it, it is. Um, this construction is very universal, but it's also it's not it's not that everything goes. It it, it has certain equations of motion. You need to find the solutions, and uh, those solutions have certain properties. They stretch the I mean, the, the interior of the black hole. Uh, uh, they uh, they also allow the wormhole solutions. Um, whether that is uh, can be applied to any theory or not, or whether it needs, uh, I mean, whether maybe that type of uh, inquiry will lead to understanding why we need chaos and why chaos is the is what is uh, holding all together. All those are open questions. Okay, we have no other questions. Let's thank Javier again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Thanks, very nice. Thanks, Gavi.